Bokashi composting is a way of pre-fermenting your food scraps so that they can decompose quickly and become nutrient microbially rich soil. You can ferment the usuals, the veggie and fruit scraps, but you can also ferment things like meat, fat, dairy, cooked foods that otherwise won't break down very quickly in the soil. If you want to see exactly how to do this, check out our video all about how to make the bran and to ferment your food scraps with it. Now, once you've done that and you've waited two weeks for your food scraps to ferment, you're ready to turn them into soil. The main way that people do this is either by composting the bokashi or by just digging it directly into the soil. But we wanted to try a couple other approaches to see what happened. Here I've got two buckets full of bokashi fermented food scraps, and these are seven ways that you can turn bokashi into soil. Question mark. We'll see how they do. We're going to start all of these experiments at once and then we'll check in on them after two weeks and four weeks to see how decomposition is going. The first way we'll try this is by digging them right into the soil. This is the most common way that people use their bokashi scraps. The second way will be by incorporating them directly into a new pile of hot compost. The bokashi in the pile is going to act as a major nitrogen kickstarter that's going to help our pile heat up quickly. We'll see how quickly those food scraps decompose. The third way we'll be trying is in a bucket of finished compost. I'm going to go ahead and mix the food scraps up in the compost. We'll close the lid and we'll come back in a few weeks to check on their status. The fourth way is also going to be in a bucket, but this time we're seeing what will happen when we incorporate the bokashi in with dried leaves. Leaves are a pretty carbon rich material, about 60 to 1, so they're going to soak up the nitrogen from the food scraps and hopefully neutralize the odors, although bokashi doesn't really smell that bad in my opinion. The fifth approach we're taking is in this bucket of wood chips. This is very similar to the leaves, except that wood chips have an even higher carbon to nitrogen ratio around 500 to 1 maybe even higher so these will definitely be soaking up the nitrogen from the food scraps I'm very curious if the wood chips decompose much through this process number six is going to be in activated charcoal now activated charcoal is the pre-charged version of biochar biochar is an incredible garden amendment I usually charge mine by incorporating it into my compost pile but mixing it with wakashi should give it some good nutrients to soak up. Activated charcoal is 100% carbon, so I'm very curious how this one is going to turn out. And then finally, way number seven we're trying out is in a worm bin. This one's also actually just in a bucket. This one is basically like the bucket of compost, but we're going to see what happens when some worms help in the decomposition process. And there you have it. We're going to wait two weeks, and we'll see what happens, and we'll check in then. All right, guys, it's been two weeks, and so we're going to go ahead and crack open our buckets and we're going to look in our hole that we dug check out our hot composted bokashi so we'll start with the buckets here's what we found after the first two weeks of decomposition for the food scraps and the charcoal it seemed as though the charcoal acted as a pause button for the decomposition there's almost no decomposition whatsoever almost felt like the two materials the charcoal and the bokashi were preserving each other but completely non-reactive to each other for the dried brown leaves, the bokashi was well on its way to decomposing, and incidentally, it actually seemed like the bokashi was helping the leaves decompose and break down. The materials weren't bone dry, but the dryness of the brown leaves had removed a good amount of the moisture and made the smell pretty neutral. In the worm castings, despite seeing a remarkable bloom over the top of the castings when we cracked open the bucket, the decomposition was minimal. Some had definitely occurred, but most of the food scraps were totally recognizable. In the finished compost, there wasn't nearly as much breakdown as I had expected. The fibrous pineapple stems were unchanged, not too surprisingly, but even the more mushy bits of food scraps hadn't decomposed much by this point. There was a small degree of microbial development on the top of the compost when we opened the bucket, similar to the bloom that we saw on the worm castings which indicated that letting it go a little bit longer might prove helpful in decomposition. In the wood chips, the decomposition was slight. Many of the food scraps were fully intact. The tea bags and the avocado shells were completely recognizable, and about the only benefit to this approach at this point was the lack of odor from the bokashi. 
Now for the Bokashi that we buried directly into the ground, we found a substantial amount of decomposition and microbial growth. This stuff had very thoroughly decomposed already. It was pretty unrecognizable when we pulled it out of the ground and it kind of had these clumps indicating that this is a really pretty fast method compared to the buckets. Finally, the Bokashi in the compost pile disappeared completely after two weeks. I tried to find evidence of the materials in the pile and was legitimately unable to. All right guys, we're done with our experiment. We've checked all seven ways that we wanted to try and decompose the Bokashi. And now I'm just gonna give you my, my take on what actually went the best. We're actually gonna start with what I think did the worst. And that, in my opinion, is probably the activated charcoal. This is kind of a surprise to me. I actually, I'm not exactly sure why it worked out this way, but I think that the materials in the activated charcoal just stayed the most the same. It didn't really feel like they broke down almost at all. There was some biology, biological development when we took the lid off and whatnot, and you can I can see it through there, but it just didn't feel like the materials really had much to react with. It's probably because there's no microbes in the activated charcoal, and maybe the microbes just infused themselves in the charcoal. The food scraps stayed undecomposed, I don't know. In sixth place, I'm giving it to the finished worm castings. Kind of another surprise for me, I would say. I kind of expected the microbes in the worm castings to do a lot of work decomposing the food scraps, but they didn't actually. Didn't seem like it. Kind of similar to the biochar or the activated charcoal, I think that the worm castings didn't do a great job of decomposing the materials any further than they already had been. In fifth place, I'm giving it to the dried leaves. These actually did better than I kind of expected. They're very high carbon source, and I guess it, that helped to soak up the materials, the nitrogen from there, because there's not that much that's recognizable in the brown leaves. I guess the main part of this one is that it actually seems like the dried leaves did most of the decomposition. There are still some remnants of the Bokashi food scraps and so but the leaves actually did decompose a bit so if you're trying to break down some leaves then incorporating some Bokashi into that probably wouldn't hurt. In fourth place I'm giving it to the wood chips. Now the wood chips did way better than I expected and I'm still actually again all of these I'm kind of reacting in real time I don't so I don't really haven't really given it much thought about why this might have done as well as it did, but there was just great microbial and fungal development, it seemed like, with the wood chips. Not surprising, because wood chips are pretty good fungal dominant when they break down. Very few recognizable materials here. The wood chips did great. In third place, it will go to the finished compost in a bucket. The food scraps are mostly gone. They're not completely gone, but they're mostly gone. And there's some really rich microbial development in there. So I think that's a great choice. So as far as the five, these the five in the buckets, these are things that you could do if you have very little yard space. Like maybe you're not even able to do much of a compost heap. Maybe you live in an apartment building and you want to Bokashi compost your food scraps and you want to just get a bin or a tote or a bucket or something like this, put your food scraps in there, make some slightly better soil, you could totally do it. My recommendation there would be to just use some compost. Or if you wanted, you could just use your dried leaves and or wood chips that you have. Those are the, the bottom five. For the top two, number two, it's the soil in the ground, just burying your Bokashi food scraps. This is one of the most traditional ways, pro probably the most traditional way of using your Bokashi food scraps. And we just found that very quickly, I mean, after two weeks, these were decomposed pretty well. And after the full month, they there was almost nothing recognizable. Soil seemed maybe marginally better from what I could tell, but I'm sure that there's more nutrients in that little section of soil. So in first place, we've got the hot composting, and that's not really a huge surprise. That's the main way that I use Bokashi food scraps is just giving my compost a boost of nitrogen to help it to heat up in temperature, and this worked really well. I would say, I mean, we actually got a little bit a later start on building the compost pile past these, so we checked it on like day 10. I think we flipped it on day 10 and I couldn't see anything. I couldn't see any of the food scraps at all. Really dug around for where I thought I'd put them in there, but 
with the microbes that are kind of heating up the compost, so the, the temperature and the other microbes, and just all the good stuff that's going in the compost pile, pretty much most of these things combined, the Bokashi food scraps evaporated. So that's definitely the fastest way to use your food scraps and it's probably the way that I'm going to use them most in the future because doing it in the buckets it does work for especially for these three but for my purposes the hot compost pile or digging it directly into the garden bed makes the most sense so there you go hopefully that was helpful to you guys maybe you were, you've wondered I wonder how different materials might decompose more quickly or in a different way. And we certainly saw a lot of different appearances when we looked, opened up the buckets and there were different fungal and bacterial developments and all of that stuff. So that was really interesting to see. If you have any questions about anything that we did here or anything, if you wanna see something in the future and different experiment with Bokashi food scraps or with anything else kind of in this area, let us know in the comments. Please drop a comment with any questions, any of your own experience would be great here as well. If you have like a certain technique that works really well for utilizing your Bokashi food scraps, that would be great to share. So please do that. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.